everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name's Josh. I wanna thank you so much for joining me on this channel and all the things that we do here together. Without you, none of this is possible. Without you, this message of child exploitation isn't as big as it is, and I wanna just never forget to thank you guys for being here with me, joining me on this amazing journey that we're doing together. I love you. Okay, I mean, should I curl it? Should I just do a little curl? Hey. Let's put a little of this, this on. It's called Clubman. Some people get a little upset that the, the mustache is a little crooked, and I get that. I'm gonna go to an actual like barber who specializes in stashes, possibly tomorrow in Toronto, just to say, hey, dude, can you help brother out? Because look at this thing, right? So, anyway, here we go. Sorry. Anyway, we're talking today about Ruby Doodly Doodly Doo, and she did a video that's apparently pretty uh, doodly doo. So let's take a look at it. Gets a little creepy. I think I watched like two seconds. I'm like, is this, am I seeing this? So let's go. Before we get into it, everybody, I want to remind you to go to Scentbird. Use the code below in the thing below. I'm not being paid for this again. I just really, really like Scentbird, and I think you guys should buy this thing for your husband or your wife or your girlfriend or boyfriend because they do women's fragrances as well. Scentbird is this amazing thing. You know, you pop it open, you get your new little vial of amazing, delicious smells. Pop it in. It's magnetic. I, I want to continue to remind you. Day one was buy this for your husband. You can do it on a monthly basis. Using my code, you get discounts and shit. It's below, it's below. Make sure you go use it. Scentbird is sick. I wear it. And I just walk around the mall and people are like, oh my God, are you single? I'm like, no. <laughs> that doesn't happen. That was a lie, sorry. Anyway, let's get to this video. Welcome to Connections. I'm Jody Hildebrand. No. The vest is no. It's a no. What's these microphones? Where'd you steal those from? No. It's no. This looks like it was filmed in a hotel room. And I'm Ruby Frankie. Hey, Frankie. What's up, Ruby Doodly Doodler? If you don't know anything with the eight passengers, I've been covering them for a very long time. They put milk on cake. Okay, it's weird. It's one of the most hard-hitting exposés I've ever done in this family was when they put the milk on the cake, and I was like, what the F? The f what is happening right now? What's happening? Why are you putting milk on a cake? I'm anybody, so I'm taking the first bite. What the hell? What am I? Is this some kind of cultural Mormon thing? Right? Anyway, so uh, Ruby Doo apparently has stopped vlogging her channel. She, uh, in my, let me take a look at her channel though. Um, still has 2.3 million subscribers and hasn't taken any videos down. They're still all up. They're still making massive residuals. Uh, let me take a look at Social Blade. So it's according to Social, according to Social Blade, they are they're bleeding subscribers. Obviously, well, not much this month. They're, still, they're stuck at 2.31 million subscribers, and the residuals are about. See, for the last 30 days, hey, they're still pulling in a half a million views a month and they're not posting anything. So they're still making money. Not a lot, but they're making money. A few thousand probably, five to 10,000 a month. So we first want to thank you. We are so grateful and touched. Did they put a little yay in the background? Nobody cares. Nobody watches this. Yeah. You know, we go to the Facebook page. It's like, oh, look, we have this many more people that join. We're so excited that you're with us. Uh... I don't know how to tell you this, Jody. Bring it on in here. I'll, 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 I'll tell you a secret. Are you listening? They're all trolls. <laughs> Everybody that joins your Facebook group is a troll. That's what they're there for. And thank God they're there because they're monitoring your shitty content. Jody, like, apparently lost her license. I'll do deep dive in this someday, but she is not someone you want to be listening to. Apparently, she gave up some of her clients to the bishops. Like, she was totally a narc for the Mormon church. And, like, that, and, like, I think when she was sued, at some point she lost her license. Why would you listen to this person? She lost all credibility in her field. 
I don't know why people pay her to do this. You know what? Maybe she's absolutely just loaded and this is just fun for them. Maybe they're dating. Don't tell Joseph Smith. And we have this image and this desire to image? have an army of mothers and fathers, men and women, teens alike, moving forward throughout this planet and learning how to live principles of truth. Shut your red jacket. Shut up. So that they actually have this beautiful outcome of connection. Shut up. And Ruby is not happy here. Something Ruby is going through it. Like, I know she deserves everything that's coming her way because of who she is and the exploitation of her children and ruining relationships and everything else. Yeah, she deserves it. But damn, homegirl needs a nap. So we know that that's why you're here and you're coming and saying, help me understand principles of truth. No, we're not. We're here to snark on your ass. Nobody wants to understand your principles of truth because your principles of truth are bullshit. Some of them might be like, you know, general principles of parenting. Sure, I'll get that. And I can even, you know, I can be right about a couple of those things. But some of their principles are like, if you were, you know, if you were, if you were art as a teenager and had a baby, you were having sex. Like she, like Ruby literally victim blamed though in the worst possible way that you could ever victim blame somebody and is still making videos. If I ever said something like that, and I never would, but if I ever did, could you imagine? How do they get away with it? These Mormons, man. Mormons watch Mormon shit, which is why they can get away with shit. Because the Mormons believe this bullshit. Something that we have noticed, though, oh. is that there's a lot of opinions being given. Well, she's about to say, and they're not aligning with my opinions. So they are wrong. And there's a lot of advice that's being given. Okay. And I've said to Ruby... Isn't you know, what the whole thing is for? Times, and I thought on my own, like... Well, I don't think that that's what it is that we're doing here. We're not interested in giving our opinion. We're not giving opinions. Are you? You're a damned liar. You, you, the whole thing here is an opinion. All of it's an opinion. You dinkleberry might be a, an opinion from a, an educated person. Still an opinion. Might be an opinion from a Mormon who exploited her children for so many years. Still an opinion. Are you shitting me? Your principles of truth are opinions. They're not principles of like truth they're not like they're this is the scariest part about them is they honestly believe that everything they say is the truth the principle of truth but it's based on mormon principles fundamental mormon principles and fundamentally mormonism is a bullshit lie okay it's literally built by this dude named joseph smith stuck his face in a hat with some stones and said oh my god now i'm gonna marry a 14 year old and have this religion to make money the mormon religion and it's, there's a scandal here in Canada. They lost a billion dollars or something? Okay. Mormons, I don't care who you are. I know a lot of you who watch me are Mormons. I'm telling you this. For the sake of your own soul, for your salvation, I honestly believe this as somebody who considers himself a believer in Jesus, okay? I know you guys are like, oh, you're not. I mean, I'm, you know, I've definitely stepped back from religion 100%. But I'm telling you this, Mormons who think that they're on the right path to salvation by the, by the precepts of the Bible, which they also believe in, they're going to be sorely disappointed when it's time for Judgment Day, is what I'm telling you. For your own good, Mormons, escape the cult. We're actually interested in helping you understand principles of truth so that you... No, you're actually interested in telling us what we should do. That's what... Yeah, okay. You can govern your life from a base of being honest, responsible, and humble. It's so perfect that Ruby is like the head of this or co-head of this like perfect mommy moment, like minute, like because she's so controlling. And any video you've ever watched of her, she's so utterly controlling. The things that she did just to Chad and her family, oh my god, Chad to me seems like a good kid. And if you watch some of their videos, and I have, man, I've only seen the ones where I've snarked on them, but Chad to me seems like a normal damn teenager. We were all there at one point. He seems like he's just going through the normal shit, but his normal shit is not aligning with what Ruby wanted for him. And so he had to end up spending like eight months in the effing wilderness, sleeping on rocks, and then gets home, pranks his brother, sleeps on a beanbag, doesn't get the, you know, privilege of having a bathroom door for eight months. The things that she has delved out to her children, if they don't break this generational Mormon curse themselves, they're going to pass that on to their families. And that is really scary. This is... Like, there's got to be some kind of middle ground here. And Ruby is on the fringe of the far fundamentalist sect of of Mormonism while she's delving out these principles of shit. So please hear, we want you to be here. We want you to then 
be thoughtful about what you think is going on and instead of just reacting to the statement she's not married right there's no way yeah that are made or the questions that are asked we are interested in when you feel triggered because many of you have been triggered and we know that because of your responses that you're giving and you'll even say this is my opinion this is my perspective and, and of course that's what we do we give those kind of things and we're inviting you to see something else we're inviting you to instead of giving an opinion and a perspective we're inviting you to learn principles of truth i hate this such christianese is triggering my, it's triggering my like my church days we're inviting you to be wrong we're inviting you to be the biggest asshole. We're inviting you to know that you're dumb. Invitation only. I hate when people say that. I've been in churches where like, let me invite you to understand how bad you are. Let me invite you to understand your sin. Let me invite you to kiss my white ass. How about that? So that you can offer. Let me invite you to get wrecked. Let me invite you to look at my weird eye. And finally, let me invite you to shut your donut hole. Nobody likes you. You don't even go here. Hands up in the chat if you've ever gone to church and a pastor has said, let me invite you, and then said some stupid shit afterwards. That to another person. Yeah, this is why there's so much confusion in the world. Is you there? go to other Facebook mom pages and you see questions that are people, mothers, you in pain saying, I've mm. got this situation going on, please help. And then you read the comments and there's hundreds of opinions and um, um, stock footage. You should do this. You should do that. And it's confusing. All of these voices coming from different backgrounds, different mm -hmm. motives, mm -hmm. different agendas, mm -hmm. um, different um, mm -hmm. scenarios from their mm -hmm. history that are being projected onto this mm -hmm. other person's experience. That sounds like probably good, right? You want a multitude of opinions sometimes, not all the time. Some people, but you know, it makes sense to me if you have a multitude of backgrounds and scenarios coming in to say, here's my experience of that. Take it for what it's worth. That's what conversation is. That's what like having your ear open to both sides is really important. But what she's what they're trying to tell you here is like, ignore all the opinions. Only our opinions are right. Only my red jacket opinion is right. No, man, don't listen to these people. Uh, that isn't necessary. And so what makes our Facebook page different, or this is where... Is that it's full of freaking trolls that you... For some reason, you don't understand that it is. Our motive and agenda is, yeah. and, and mm -hmm. we probably should have been more clear about that. We don't know what we're doing. Sorry, <laughs> we're learning. Do they just admit they don't know what they're doing? But they're going to just tell you to live by their principles and truths. Okay. I won't allow it. Learning with you, so thank you for being patient with us. What? We're, we're figuring this out. Figuring what out? You don't know how to use social media? Ruby, are you shitting? You're a damn liar. Your whole world has been social media for like 12 years. You don't know how to use Facebook? And we, we, we named we... it Moms and Truth because our motive and our agenda is to... If she walked by an open flame with that shirt, it'd be so funny. Squelch the confusion, not by saying you need to do this. No, that's, ex that's exactly what you're doing. That is exactly what you're doing. But by saying, here's where the honesty is, here's where the responsibility lies, and here's um, what showing up humble in this situation would look like. <laughs> not to tell you what to do, but to tell you what to do. Did you guys just hear that? These are the people. <laughs> And then you choose to do um, what you think is best. That's where you, okay. who are making the decision, get to bring in your opinion and using... Jody's like, shut up, shut up, man. Shut up, shut up, shut up. The principle. You're just here to be like the person with the big social media platform. The truth offered. So the invitation is... Uh, and the hope is that all of the moms that come here learn how and practice plugging in principles of truth into these different circumstances. Well, get to the shit then. Let's hear this. Yes. So the core principles of truth are, are about learning how to be honest, mm -hmm. learning, mm -hmm. okay. learning how to be responsible, responsible for what? Yeah. Your own perceptions, your own feelings, your own actions. So perception comes first, then you have an emotional response to a perception, like you're creating. Is anybody listening to this? I'm already like, I lost it. I took notes and I already burned them. Yeah. And then you take your- If you're gonna like 
be on the internet and like be a person that's going to like put videos out. Be engaging. Okay. You sound like a drunk librarian. Nobody's listening to you. Like if I was in this class, I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be drawing like that little S that you see here, like, you know, Nike signs all over my book. That's this. I would have forgotten everything she said because she doesn't know how to deliver this message in an engaging way. She's so bad at this shit. So bad. Perception and your emotion, and you then go act with it. And so as we're getting... Hope there's not a pop quiz on this shit because I failed. Comments back. People are perceiving not a truth. You're not hearing what we're saying to you. We're inviting you to be responsible for what you're perceiving. And we're asking you to be responsible for what you're feeling. And we're asking you to be responsible for your action, which is your type. Oh my God. Stop it. I'm, I'm going to react to this person. Like when you're responsible for all of that, then you are living in truth. And here's how we will know if a comment is coming towards us in truth. There will be curiosity. In <laughs> will there be? I know that someone had made, um, and they've sent them to me, that they were literally trolling. I'm pretty sure they're still in the group. And they would make posts that seemed genuine enough to be like, you know, my daughter killed a guy once and I didn't know what to do about it. And I'm really genuine. And they had a huge debate about it. They don't know. <laughs> These people are straight up either know that they're being trolled and they're, they're leveraging it to bring more attention to themselves or they don't know and that's worse. Your question, in, in, like in your statements, you will say, help me understand. You will say, um, stock footage. I used to do this and now I can see. Nice jacket. I don't like it. The truth. Anyone who is actually practicing living principles of truth does not attack, does not get defensive, does not blame does not say, well, citizen, it's okay. Citizen? Who says citizen? Have you also, Jody, have you ever seen any of Ruby's videos ever? I'm just wondering, do you know who you're sitting next to? Everything you just said is everything she really is, like to in a nutshell. In a straight up Mormon nutshell. Have you, are you, and you know Ruby's sitting there like, oh my God, I am all those things. They, they don't do those things. Mm -hmm. And so if you hear in your mind that you're getting reactionary and you want to come at one of us or at someone else who has made a comment in the Facebook page mm -hmm. and you feel like that's wrong mm -hmm. and you're upset mm -hmm. and you want to tell them how wrong they are, yeah. you are in classic distortion. Oh, that here we go. You, if you're doing something because you have an opinion that's a different opinion than theirs, you're in distortion. Okay, I'm still in the mom of truth book. <laughs> I'm still in the moms of truth with Jody and Ruby page. I'm still here. They must know I'm here. They got to know. Like they know, right? How many people follow this page? 13,000 members. And all of them are trolls. Not all of them. 16 of them are trolls. Wow, that's crazy. Actually see and to humble and change. Yeah, humble, eh? Neither of you wearing your wedding rings, so. It's always the ones that have failed shit that want to tell you how to do shit, right? You know what I'm saying? Mm, you know what I'm saying? Not saying I'm perfect. None of us are. But it's always the ones that have, like, failed completely. Let me tell you how to do it. Well, I mean, you failed at it. So how are you going to tell me? Well, I'm going to tell you what I could have done. Oh, okay. Yeah, no thanks. I have an example of a, a curious question that came in. Mm -hmm. So I had answered someone's question about this mother had a 17-year-old who didn't want to go to church any longer. And I made a video response. And in it, I had made a reference to The Walking Dead. Now, Good show. I'm on the final season. It's so good. You know, when the thing with Negan happened, though, was anybody else like, burn Negan to death, right? You didn't expect there to be that arc that happened, right? To this day, I'm still kind of pissed at Negan a little bit, right? But I've seen the arc. But if you watch The Walking Dead, oh my gosh, such a good show. I've been in social media for many years, and, and I have been a mother in distortion more years than I've been a mother in truth. Agreed. At least she's being honest. Give her that. This is new. I've been studying this for four years. And um, so I've got... Is she, 
is she saying that you know she lived in distortion all those years and then for the last four years she's not lived in distortion she's cleaned up all of her ways but still has every single video on her channel okay i don't believe you if you're gonna make these claims that you have changed and done this thing then maybe you should take your shit down just saying People accuse me all the time. Josh, you're just a failed family vlogger. I had one video up. One. And it was funny, by the way. It's Tyson and I. One. But as I started realizing how shitty this world was, that we shouldn't be doing this to our children, I took everything off. Right? At least I said I recognized what I was doing and I removed that shit. Right? And I say that to all the family vloggers that decide that they're going to take their kids off. I will remove my shit. Okay? But if you are actually saying this right now and saying you're all better, then why are you still capitalizing on it? Just some food for thought, you know? Cake and milk for thought. Got video footage of me being in distortion for years before that. Yeah. And still on your channel. You know how humble that is? That's humble. She's telling you. I was in distortion. I you assholes, go to her channel. All your distortion is still on display for everybody to see. Are you doing that as an example of how far you've come or something? Because your marriage is over. You're not wearing a wedding ring. You're ch I don't even think half your children live with you or have relationships with you anymore. Are you saying that 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 for the last four years? And so what it looks like to me is that for the last four years, you changed over to this fundamental craziness, and that's where everything fell apart. Not from the distortion you lived in before, because you guys are raking in millions of dollars and having some fun at least. You went to this whole other thing of this fundamentalist crazy swing, and now you're like, now you don't have anything? That's real sus. You know what I'm saying? That's this teen that says the teenagers say sus or cap or some shit or fly i don't know what they say i was i was harming my kids i was being yeah i was selfish. being super neglectful in now you got to give ruby props for coming out in this video and like being truthful like at least she's being truthful and you can see all the other family vloggers like holine and all the other her members of her family and everybody who does this like oh ruby don't do this shit don't do this shit another one came out recently too it had to do it was going through a divorce and she's like this whole shit is fake like this all, all this family vlogging stuff is coming to, to the light and not in one, in, in none of these scenarios where these kids have been exploited, none of them so far have turned out to be like, this was great. I'm so glad we did this. Not one. The opposite is true. In the area that I wasn't bringing truth into my home. And she said, I'm being genuinely curious. You said you made mention of The Walking Dead not being appropriate, mm -hmm. but yet I saw you had a video where your son liked The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. Hypocrite. And so I understood. I know. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a TV show. Way less worse than exploitation. Good job, Mom, for pointing that out to her. Yeah. And Jody. Stop. And it felt very genuine. Uh, you, it, the curiosity was there. And yeah. so I responded. I said, thank you so much. You're actually helping me. You're shedding a light on this distorted, disconnected parenting that I used to go into. Me allowing my child to watch The Walking Dead was me being selfish because I didn't want to ruffle the distortion inside of my child, which meant I knew if I said no, he was going to get mad. And I just, you know, I don't want to deal with the kids being mad. That's my selfishness. And... Ruby's a tyrant. Are you serious? You don't want to deal with your kids being mad. It sounds like if they ever got mad that she would like it would she would gaslight and turn it around. Like the Ruby is not supposed to be giving you guys parenting advice. She failed completely. The Ruby has no discernible like redeeming qualities to be giving you advice on parenting because she has completely failed. She has adult children that she, that that have grown out of her home and she failed them. So it's you you can't go back now and just be like, "Oh, here's what you should have done." Nope. You damn day hole. Um, I didn't get curious about what was in the show. I didn't ever sit down and watch it. Well, you'd have been pissed at Negan if you did. Because damn it. Damn it, that scene. Right? You guys who who invested in The Walking Dead, when that shit went down, what, did, what happened to your heart? Right? <laughs> Negan, man. Mm! Years later, my littles, my littles, who were even littler at the time, I mean, they were just little oh it breaks my heart hey say little again please thanks they're telling me all the things that they saw in this show there was pornography there was extreme violence that there's pornography no there's none there's no nudity i would remember that there's no nudity there's absolutely awesome violence though like they're killing zombies so much awesome violence the show is amazing just go watch a story being told Come on. 
You're not gonna like watch this and then go kill zombies. Because zombies don't exist. There was killing, there was murder, mm -hmm. and Yeah, Negan. They they have been bothered for years and they've never You let your little kids watch okay. That's a little bit much. Like I'm saying, you know, 15 above can watch that. I mean, not you let your little kids watch The Walking Dead? Holy neglectful. I mean, I mean, I knew you were bad, but damn, woman. Felt comfortable to come tell me about it. Why? Because I was such a disconnected mother. Because you were such a biatch and you were going to get grounded or they're going to lose everything. They didn't, they were watching shows in secret, not telling you because you would have flown off the handle and sent them to like wilderness camp or space or something. That's why they don't tell you. This is so telling of, this is so interesting. And I've said this for years about Ruby. Her kids don't tell her anything. And this is the, all these people. They don't tell you anything. Remember the thing we read on Reddit the other day? The girl couldn't tell her mom about anything because she was scared she'd share it on the channel. These kids can't trust their parents. They don't have anybody to talk to. How effing gross is that? <laughs> so not only did it hurt the older son who was watching this show, it hurt the little ones and I didn't know about it. It's been rotting in their system for years. And now it's finally coming to the surface. And so- They'll be all right. It's just a TV show. My job is to stay humble. Hmm. My job is to is see it? where my responsibility lies and which is to clean up. I need to repent for being so selfish. I need to go in and say, I am, if this was my responsibility. I did not protect you. I allowed this to come into our home. I mean, is she saying The Walking Dead as like a marker for, hey, I exploited you for your entire lives for millions of dollars. Is that what she's saying here? Because that's what I'm picking up on. She's not talking about The Walking Dead. She's talking about as a, her failure as a parent because she fully exploited her children. She's like, I didn't watch what they were watching. No, no, Ruby. You were so wrapped up in your own narcissistic ass that you literally, and exploitation, that you literally didn't know what was going on because it was your full-time job. If anything, she's telling you, she's telling everybody what the behind the scenes is of a family vlogger. And this is one of the most pure family vloggers, pure, you know, quote unquote, pure family vloggers. Right? They didn't drink, they didn't party, they didn't have their kid hold up the phone while they did a sexy dance in the mirror. They didn't do any of that shit. They wore like very modest clothing. They were, went to church. They had good family values. And so they were the most innocent looking, but so predatory behind the scenes. So when you take someone like Brampty and Ace Family and all the ones who are like debaucherous, how much worse is it in those homes? Could you imagine? So she's whistleblowing and I'm here for it. Stash curl. You guys are wondering where Gus is. He's right now currently at surgery. At surgery today. It was very expensive. But Gus is worth it. He's my man. He was so sad. He has like uh, separation anxiety. And he looked at me when I left. Like I betrayed him. And I cried on the way home. I literally cried. <laughs> because like your dog's going in for a really, really crazy surgery. And you're like, you don't know if you're going to see him again. Anyway, they called. He went through the surgery really well. Everything's great. He's overnight there. Um, he's doing okay. And I'm going to go pick him up tomorrow. So he's going to be really excited. But he can't get excited. That's the problem. Because he's got huge. They took out like bone and everything. But the thing they took out of him was the size of a football. So it was like the size of... I don't know, probably like the size of like a hat, like this big that came out of them. So great surgeons there though. So we're excited. I don't know why I told you that, but I missed my goose goose. I can see clearly that you've been um, in fear for many years. You've had nightmares, you've had thoughts, and I I was not there to protect you, and I, and I should have been. What about the strangers then? had parasocial relationship with your children. What about that? And so the real predators, not a TV show. Now I go in and do that cleanup. And that's what we're inviting oh, you to yeah, do. Oh, late, late there. Herbs. It was my motivating drive. It is my motivating drive for creating this content. I was a hugely disconnected, dumbass, selfish, oh. aggressive, dumbass, neglectful mother. Dumb mother. Entitled, yeah. entitled. Douchey. I smelly, terrible, exploitative, mean, wicked. I'd say wicked is in there. You could put wicked in there. I wanted my kids to be happy, which AKA translated into, I want my kids to get off my back. I don't believe her, what she's saying here right now. Have you ever seen any of her content? Even of the things I did see of her, she's literally up in her kids' grills every two seconds of the day. One of your kids off your back. Are you shitting me? So that means even it's even more fake than we even thought. So everything and all the engagement with her children was only just for the camera. Then when it was off, there was nothing. Holy shit. That's, that's, is she sure she wanted to say this? 
<laughs> because I want to do what I want to do. I want to be able to go to Target. I want to be able to- You did go to Target. That's all you did. Shop. I want to be able to have a moment of silence where I can just think. It was all like the time you're in the bathtub and you said, oh, I have to take Mickey to the hospital. So instead I took care of myself, had a bath and I'm sitting here. Oh, yes. Look at the hospital now. Yeah. Is you mean that? Yeah. You know, you see it all now and you, and you know, she's trying to be like, look at me now, but you're like you, it's too late, man. She, and if you, if you had an honest conversation with her adult children, I bet you they'd say the same thing. Like, it's too late. Like they're going to be, they're screwed for what she did to them. It's all about me. And I made my kids responsible for that. And so I allowed them to have what they wanted. Like going to wilderness camp for eight months. They want that. A lot of these disconnected comments that are coming in are all about, um, God. they're coming from this Death star shans and shot. perception that my loving my child means letting them have what they want. Mm -hmm. And this is a phase. The outcomes are just a phase and that will dissipate. And the truth is loving your child is holding them accountable. Mm -hmm. Loving your child mm -hmm. is expecting them to show up humble. If I went to her videos, if I really wanted to, I'd probably find thousands of examples of them being punished. So... I don't believe anything she's saying. Loving your child is expecting honesty. And when those don't happen, you reflect and hold them accountable. Right. Mm hmm Did you... But they don't get to hold you accountable. No, that's... That's distortion. Hear all those principles that she just completely owned? No. I just heard her telling the truth of what happened behind the scenes in the exploitation. And it was fire. She said... I did all of these things that were... No, she just said her kid watched The Walking Dead, so... ...really destructive from a place of selfishness. And then she said, I'm, I've, I'm repenting, and mm -hmm. I've repented. To who? Who are you repenting to? You're repenting to your children? Repenting to Joseph Smith, to God, to Jesus, to Jody? Who is she repenting to? Repenting to the ether? It's too late, man. Apparently her marriage is over. Too late. And if she's been doing these principles for four years, that's really telling. I um, am open. I am curious. I can say anything I want to her, and she hears it. Like, I Okay. Like what? Here, I'll say some stuff to you, Ruby. Pickleball. Burnt toes. Hairy nuggets. Fluffy sweater. Certain doom. Negan is an asshole. Mormon taints. <laughs> I don't tiptoe around her at all, and she can say whatever she wants to me, mm -hmm. and I don't get offended. Both of you are failures. Can I say that to you? Okay, cool. Don't get offended, though. Because both of us understand truthful principles. Mm -hmm. We know that there's love between us. We mm -hmm. know that we both have the same motive, which is to stay in truth individually. She just said about her parenting, <laughs> it, it, that's me too. And it's you too. And it doesn't mean no, bad, it's not me. bad on you or bad on me. It just means that we don't know where truth is. We're, we're doing the... the You're just saying shit. That doesn't make sense. Best, quote unquote, that we know how. And we're inviting you to stop doing your best and start living in truth. This isn't about good, better, best. It's about there's truth and there's distortion. That's it. Truth and distortion. And once I started realizing about truth and I started learning about distortion, oh my gosh, major overhaul. In you made up this shit. So what do you mean learning about it? You're the one who wrote the book on this bullshit. My life around be humble, be responsible, be honest. Be dumb. And if you and I were sitting across from each other, I would have no problem giving you a laundry list of all the things that I did that was in distortion and injured my children. And I, I used to tell my kids, you know what? I'm Don't say the word injure when it's not an injury. I'm giving you the best I know how. This is when I was in distortion because I didn't know about oh truth. God. I didn't know about distortion. Uh, and I would say, I'm are you honestly best. saying that unless you follow their rules of what is truth and shit, that everybody's in distortion? How can you say that? That's such bullshit, man. They follow everything we tell you or you're in distortion, which means you're in the wrong. From failed people. I know how, and I'm sure I'm screwing you up. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm doing something that's injuring you. And one day you're going to yank me into some therapy appointment and tell me all the things <laughs> I did. That <laughs> funny. You know how expensive therapy is? Okay. It's not funny. 
shit's expensive. Screwed up your life. And I said, and I will be there. And I will own everything that I've done. Why don't you do it now? I just have to go to therapy. It's expensive. And I expect you to own your perception of what I did. Be <laughs> what? Excuse me? So uh, this is victim blaming 101, gaslighting 102. There's two courses you can take in her course. Basically, she just said, you know, you have to own your perception of what you thought I did. And I, you know, I'll tell you what that perception should be. Excuse me? <laughs> nope. You don't get to tell the victim of the shit that you did to them. Hey, you got that wrong. No! You're going to take advice from this lady after she just said that? Okay. Everything she says ever, and I didn't believe it anyway, now is out. The you have to be responsible for your perception of what happened. Well, this is my perception. Well, that might be wrong then. It's, it's not wrong. My perception, I'm the victim here. That's my perception. That's my truth. That's my lived truth. That's victim. I cannot believe she just said that. Holy shit. Because my motive is never to hurt you. <laughs> it's never been my motive to hurt you. Yeah, I'm sure. It's been my She's talking to her kids right now. Motive to love you, but I did not know how to love you because I didn't understand about principles of truth. Oh my god, how did we get through all of humanity? There was no love before Jody's book on principles of truth. Thank god she wrote this book. That that is crazy. How did we get through this world without your book, Jody? Oh my God, she's just, we got the answers to the universe now. Yay, taints. I did exactly what Ruby was doing, trying to love my kids by letting them have their way, letting them do what they want, telling myself that they'll grow out of it, telling mm -hmm. myself that this is not big of a deal when it's a huge deal. They're sitting over here lying and hiding and being selfish and entitled. It's That's your fault most of the time. A huge deal. That's, again... If your kids don't trust you enough to come to you, that means the bond isn't solidified. You've done something. I'm not saying it's always the parents' fault here. Don't get me wrong. I get that, right? Some teenagers, some kid, some kids, some teenagers just it just happens, right? I get that. You can you can love them to the ends of the earth, but some some kids just don't respond and they want to go their way. I get that, right? But at the same time, Ruby has admitted there are kids, and I said this way back in the day before she even said it right here. They're not gonna go to you because they don't trust you. They think if they tell you the truth, they're just going to get shit on. That's why when you build a bond with your children, you say, look, you're going to call me one day and you're going to be drunk, but that's okay. You get a freebie on this one. I'll come pick you up. I'd rather that than you go drunk driving or go do something stupid, right? You're going to call me one day and you've made a mistake, but you're going to tell me about it and I'm going to come and I'm going to help you out. I'm not going to punish you for coming clean with what you've done, right? These Ruby is not like that. They, if they would have come clean, then shit, they're going off to wilderness camp. Right. That's why when I had Dr. Kirk on, the most important thing I've ever heard from Dr. Kirk about parenting is the bond. And it seems like none of these family vloggers, none of them have any capacity to build a bond with their children because the bond is done on camera and it's fake. Like I'm saying none of them because you know how narcissistic you have to be to share your daily life with the world and to forgo your children's privacy concerns for your own social gains monetary gains and your own narcissistic gains so i'm telling you people who have the capacity to do what these family vloggers do i'm telling you it is impossible for them to be good parents impossible and i know that's such a black and white thing that i'm saying but just think about it for a second what they, are, what they are willing and capable of doing to their children, there is just no way that they actually do love their children the way they're supposed to. That's a principle of truth that you can suck on. And I told myself all those things like, no, they'll be mad at me, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna rock the boat. You know, this is just, you know, this is just, they're, they're just curious. Somebody said in a, in a post, like, you know, exploring their sexuality at- Just listen to the light piano music in the background means that these people are dumbasses. 12 is reasonable it's like what <laughs> why in the world is a 12 year old exploring their sexuality they're supposed to be out playing with animals and little girls and 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 going to school learning about you know science and math Holy not exploring their sexuality babysitting yes walking the dog so understanding that love equates to truth when you finally get that you will then start desperately loving your children and we will turn this world around no you won't not with these principles i'm sorry and remember guys i came i was a fundy 
I was a religious, I was a pastor. I was a, cl- a member of the clergy. I wasn't a real pastor, right? I was a worship pastor, right? But I was a member of the clergy. I studied religion. I studied the Bible, hermeneutics and things at Bible college. I was a full-blown pastor. That's like literally check off the tax thing. Clergy member, right? I was a person who grew up in a fundamental Baptist style church who believed all the same shit that they're believing, right? And I'm telling you, if you actually follow the fundamental rules of religion, the fundamental rules of religion, meaning I, I, and I, I would, I would venture to say is the absolute absence of God, to be honest with you. I swear to God, I say that because it's not just rules and regulations and all these kinds of things. If you follow the fundamental principles of religion, everything would fall apart. And that's why a lot of churches are falling apart. Modern churches specifically, Hillsong and everything, falling apart. All that shit is falling apart, right? But if you take the fundamental principle of the one thing that Jesus told everybody to do, which was to love, and that's it. And I've said this many times, okay? Just to love. And I know I don't practice what I preach on this channel, right? Because if I did, I wouldn't be as mean as I am to half these people, right? So I'm not. I'm saying I'm a hypocrite. But if we actually, at one point, if you want to change the world... The only thing you have to do is love. And for half the shit that these people are doing or judging others for doing is not love. And I'm not saying, you know, you should affirm everybody either. But at the same time, Jesus doesn't, Jesus never affirmed, like people will say, oh, when Jesus drew the line in the sand from the prostitute that was going to be stoned, right? He wasn't affirming her to go on and continue to be a hooker, right? He was, that wasn't an affirmation, but it was a love and a protection and a non-judgment. Even though he was the only person on earth able to judge that person. He didn't do it. So imagine we all took that principle of love, protect, give, send, go, do those things without the judgment. How much better would everybody be? Especially churches. If you stop, if you just drop the bullshit, right? And just said, we're going to give you the clothes that you need. We're going to feed the people who are hungry. We're going to like help mothers who chose life. We're going to do all these things instead of building, you know, $10 $10 million buildings and every five years redoing the sound system worth $25 million and like, you know, sending 25 white people to Africa to build a playground cost, you know, $200,000, you know, doing all these things. What if you just did the thing you're supposed to do? That's all I'm saying. That's my rant for today. Took you to church. If the mothers of the world got together and mm-hmm. understood truth and were like, no, understood your truth. So no. Locked arms, mm-hmm. locked arms mm-hmm. like this. Nothing's getting through us. No. See those kids behind us? You gotta get through us to get to them. We have like two billion people together of women. There'd be lots of weird smells. Like it's nice smells, because you all wear different perfumes, you know what I'm saying? Holy smokes. Holy smokes. And so when when you come in and you say, Well, it's just my opinion, or not to be rude, but and then not to be rude, but gives you permission to say whatever you want. Like you do? Okay, cool. Those are chinks in this this bold wall that we are wanting to create, where mothers are powerful, where we get together and we hold the line. We hold- Stop quoting lines from movies. That's cheesy and cringy. Hold the line. When you are at war, you- Freedom! You want the people on the front line to be strong, not like, well, you know, let them do what they want. We we need to be strong mothers because we are on the front lines. That is where you are. You are in the trenches. Stop. Stop it. Stop. Shit's changed since the 50s, okay? It has changed. And I'm not giving permission to people to be like, oh, do whatever you want, because I absolutely don't think that people like Doherty Dozen are doing good things for the children either. But there is a happy medium, everybody, okay? Things have changed from, like, getting my ass getting beat with a belt and shit like that when I was young and grounded every two days. And, you know, like, it, it, shit has changed, right? Parenting has changed. We have learned from our past mistakes. A lot of us broken generational traumas, okay? But there is a different way. You could throw everything out that they said about religion, about this toxicity and this distortion and just do it the, the thing that that dr kirk said bond man it's the bond that's it the bond but what they want is what they're trying to push on you and tell you to do is to raise your kids the way we want you to raise your children right in these truths and principles so if your kid wants an ipad no you know if your kid wants to go off and date at 15 or nope that's sin jesus is, is mad 
right? If you, you know, there, there's, it, it, every person is different and they're basing, they're saying all these principles are the exact same for everybody. And that's just not true. Right. And we're in the trenches with you. So do not, do not relinquish truth because you want to be like, oh, because you think this is you a suck ass. phase. It's not, this is life. We're at war. No, you're not. This isn't a phase. People are being wounded. My children were wounded. By you. Nobody else. You did that. You did it. You did it. They were hurt. Their souls were killed. The stuff that I allowed. Did you just say your children's souls were killed? Because they watched The Walking Dead? Okay. Again, that's why you can't listen to anything these people say. This is what a fundamentalist speaks like. I used to be this. I used to think if you listen to secular music, smoke, drank, you're going to hell in a handbasket. I honestly used to think that stuff. <laughs> I swear to God. That she's like, there's only one way to do all this. I'm sorry. It's not true. My home killed their spirits and it has taken... Oh. Is she honestly blaming kids watching Walking Dead for killing your spirit or did you kill their spirit? Did you kill the spirit with what you put them through for the last 12 years? How long have they been on that damn channel? They've been around since 2015, so seven, almost eight years. You've been on this channel for, you have over a billion views. You've exposed your children to a billion views, okay? And you're gonna, <laughs> you gotta be kidding me right now. I can't, I can't believe I have to, like, good. You know what? Good. Whole, it, it, I have been full time. You wonder where I've been on my vlogs? You wonder why I left YouTube? It's to save my kids. You're such a damn liar. Ugh. Okay. No amount of money. I And I'm telling you, I was making millions. Millions. They have over a billion views on their channel. They made millions. And I left it. Uh, because my kids were being hurt. Because you, no, you stop saying that. You take responsibility right here, Ruby. You and your husband hurt your kids. They weren't being hurt by this entity out in space. You did that. And the last video you did was 10 months ago. So if you've been doing this for four years, so what happened? Four years ago, you were doing videos every week. You can cry here all day long, Ruby. And and again, and I do believe that everybody is worth, has inherent value and has, there is, you know, there is redemption for everybody. Even Ruby do here. Okay, but if you continue to keep that shit on your channel and make money on it, how am I supposed to, how is anybody supposed to believe you? With entitlement, they were being hurt. With people's advice, and they didn't have a mother up the front saying, I don't care what the world's opinion is, this is the truth, and this is where I stand. You're a bullshit liar, because you can go to any video where she's trying to tell her kids, you know, talk to them about this and that. She's always been the most opinionated person in this family. Are you saying that your kids just, no, I, I don't believe anything she's saying right now. She's lying right here. She's saying, I'll let everybody say what they... No, 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 no. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. She's trying to pass the buck a little bit here. And fortunately, I had a chance. I had them in my home long enough to do it, and I'm not going to lose them. They're seeing truth. They're accepting truth. They're loving truth. And... S I'm probably just trying not to piss you off is what's probably going on right now. They're already conditioned. Hear me out, Ruby. Your children are already conditioned to walk on eggshells around you. And so this new bullshit you brought in about distortion and truth and all this stuff, that's just the next thing that they're used to. So you're going to bring that in. And of course, they're going to listen to that because they know better not to. They know what's going to trigger you. They know what's going to piss you off and get them in trouble. And so they're just following along with your principle of truth because they're scared of you. You ever think of that? So this is my passion is to invite you to stand in truth and put your opinions to the side for a minute. And listen to only my opinion. Okay. Because your kids Thanks. are the target of distortion. They're just making shit up. That doesn't even make sense. We need you. We love you. We know what power exists inside you. Chill with the music. You 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 take away all the power of everything you're saying. And you're trying to be all serious. And you're like, doo, doo, doo. You got Elton John in the back. It doesn't work. And we want you to be here. So please... Humble yourself. Become. Excuse me? Humble. Humble yourself and do what we tell you to do. We don't need to humble ourselves, though. We're the ones who are telling you what humbleness is. 
Okay, humble your jacket. Curious about what we're saying. If you start getting reactionary, stop yourself and say, stop. Jennifer, stop. Rachel, stop. What are they trying to say to me? What am I not hearing? Why am I want to fight them? Because you're wrong. That's why. Most of the shit you're saying here is actually probably pretty dangerous for the world. The fundamental belief of what you bring to the world from your Mormon principles is actually effing dangerous. Do you know how many children suffered at the hands of churches through just, just the one thing, purity culture, just purity culture. Do you know how many effing kids you, that church messed up because of purity culture? Just the one thing I can go on about a million other things. Okay. We can talk about a million other things, but just the one thing that your church is responsible for. No, no, thanks. That's your distortion. That's what comes up in me. Anytime I want to fight someone, I'm like, stop, Jody, stop. Why am I getting so reactionary here? Because you're dumb. Like, there's no threat here. There's no threat. What's going on? The threat that I say is not here, the real threat is inside me. That says... Okay, Tony Robbins, let's get with the shit. Come on. Attack them. Attack them. How dare they say that? They can't say that. You're literally saying it in a nice way that you're all wrong. Listen to our principles. Do you not get that either? Okay. They're wrong for saying that. You are saying Don't that. Attack us. Don't attack yourself. Attack distortion. Where? Is, okay. Distortion, you can right off, man. What? You're so stupid. Distortion is the thing that's trying to drag you down. Are you saying distortion is the devil or something? Or we, 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 is it, a, is it an entity? What is, like, explain it. Kill you and kill your children. We are It'll here kill them. To help you see it. We're desperately desiring to help you see it. We're putting ourselves at... Then maybe consider... Oh, you're sitting next to you. I'm just saying, consider, your, consider your people. Maybe best coming from someone else or somebody? Out into a worldwide audience because... Both of us are committed to God. And ah, there it is. Both committed to the principles that God stands for. Okay. I don't think God stands for the principles you stand for. Maybe to a degree, some of them, but the, the oozing of judgment from, from everything I've seen in this video, it comes with, you guys light piano music behind it, doesn't mean that there's just like this massive hit of judgment from these people. Okay, we don't want your opinions or your anything. Just take our opinions because our, only our opinions are right. You're wrong about all the shit that you think. Are you, like, I hope people can see through this because that's dangerous rhetoric. Okay, and the scary part is, is that some of these moms on this group probably believe the shit that's coming out of their face holes. And we'll take the arrows of distortion oh, to help you? share with okay. anyone, even if it's one what? person that can hear us. Oh, you're going to die in the altar of distortion? How? What are you just spouting shit? I don't believe anything you're saying. We're here. So please don't leave. Just humble yourself and get curious. God. Am I in distortion? You're in distortion. <laughs> oh my God. Holy shit. I'm glad I watched that. That's actually quite interesting. Not going to lie to you. So yeah, don't listen to anything they say. Cool? If you're going to parent, be good. You know, here's some advice. If you really want some advice from a dad. Sure. I'm not saying I'm good. I'm not saying I'm the best. I could be bad sometimes. I'm not the best parent in the world. None of us are. None of us can claim we're the best. So, but here's my two cents. Okay? <laughs> don't raise your children in a fundamentalist sect of anything. Not politics. Not religion. Nothing. Your children are unique and special and are going to have different needs, different wants, different desires. Not saying give your kid everything, but at its core, if you build a bond with your child from day one, okay, and it's never too late to start because that's what Dr. Kirk said too. Even if you didn't start with the bond, build the bond. And the bond looks like something like, hey, you know what? There's not all these rules and principles we have to live by. Right? There's not yes and no. There's not this. You're not dating to your this. You're not doing that. And there's no swearing. And there's not. Ah! It's all about like, okay, let's 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 walk this together. You got a question for me? Let's have a conversation about it. Okay, your kids are going to be way more apt to be really, really, really great contributing members of society when they are able to think for themselves, have great conversations, and be able to like talk it out. And if they have a parent that loves them and that they trust, all the more better because then they become trusting adults and become better humans. And I know everybody, including myself, has failed completely at this a lot. 
Okay. But it's something daily now that ever since I heard that one thing daily, I consider my, my bond with my children daily. I consider it. Everly wants to come watch me play pickleball. I'm like, you're just going to be sitting there for two hours watching me. And she's like, I don't know. I want to be around you. That's a bonding moment where I'm like, you know what? You're right. You watch me play pickleball. You draw a little picture. She gets to spend time with dad, right? That's our moment together. We go to blue Jays games together. Westy and I, we play Lego or we play transformers and those moments where he wants to play and I play with him. That's a bonding moment. There's so many examples of a place where you can start to build a bond. Even if you haven't started now, if you just put that in your mind, how do I build, how do I like form the bond out of this situation? If you, if you look at it from that perspective, I think everything will change as a parent, to be honest with you. That's what I think. I could be wrong. I'm not saying it's right for everybody, but I'm saying, man, imagine a kid that comes to you when they have an issue instead of being scared to come to you. What situation would be better? The fact that they trust you and they come to you with all these things, the fact they have to keep secrets from you and not tell you anything, it's more dangerous in my opinion. So take that. You don't have to. I'm just saying that's what I believe. So everybody, thanks for joining me in this important conversation today. Take a deep breath. Breathe out the distortion into someone else's eyeballs. Okay. You guys are incredible and valuable. Protect your kids. And I know you guys are here because you do protect your kids and you love your children. And we're all sitting up here talking about the exploitation of children. We're laughing and having fun with it too. But it is at its core a really, really important topic. And Ruby just gave away some secrets. All these family vloggers are bullshit liars. And none of them, and I'm saying none of them, have proper relationships with children. They can't because it's almost impossible at your core to be able to put like Jess fam on your wall or like, you know, be on social media 12 hours a day and share everything with everybody and also be a good parent. That's what I'm saying. So thanks for being here, everybody. You're beautiful, gorgeous. You look amazed today. Don't ever forget, you need to be here. Don't damn well fly flare. I don't care if it's free and I'll see you tomorrow.